Hi folks, welcome to my Epit Retro Journal. Um, today I'm going to uh, do uh, some additional work on my TRS-80 Pocket Computer. Um, last time I uh, was able to transfer a basic program that was written on here to my ZX81 and then I was able to transfer it back. Um, uh, however, when I did that it actually required a lot of um, hand input. So I was using my um, Windows machine and uh, it required me to uh, to basically um, uh, at one point load Audacity and save that file. And so there were a bunch of steps I had to do by hand in order to get this uh, to work. And what I want to do today is um, actually uh, have this automated such that when I hit see save on this and load on this, a minute later, a few minutes later, it'll actually automatically load and I don't have to do anything else. Um, the way I'm going to accomplish this, uh, I'm going to write a Python script uh, to do that. And Python, interestingly enough, I find on my Windows machine, reminds me a lot of, um, so the, um, the ZX, or the, 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 the Sinclair QL, um, has, a, has a disk operating system on it. Uh, and again, I kind of talked about its multitasking preemptive kernel, but it also has a built-in super basic. And what's nice about that is it allows you to really script things up. Uh, as well as write programs in general. And I find that Python on a, the Windows machine actually um, does the same thing. I can get to the audio port, I can listen for it, I can save a, out a WAV file, so it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, and so I'm gonna uh, 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 write some Python code today to, to automate the, the process between the pocket computer and the um, ZX81, or my version, Timex and Claire 1000. The program I'm going to actually do is um, the a program that I had loaded on here last time. So if, if I turn this on and put it uh, so you can see it, notice that I have, um, so again, it's got to get at the right angle. There we go. I'm going to run it. So this is still the uh, uh, decimal conversion program. So if I type in four, five, six, seven, um hit return it has the digit one being seven so that's the rightmost digit the least significant digit d so seven d one one so the hex is one one d seven um and so that program i'm going to uh load in uh to which i did last time but this time i'm going to do it without um much input uh, from me i'm just going to basically turn the the transfer program on that I, that I'm going to write the Python program and uh, have it listen and then automatically send it when I'm done so I think that's going to be kind of interesting um, so uh, uh, and th and that should sort of demonstrate that if I can do it on a Windows machine I can probably do it on on a on a small maybe a a, um, a microcontroller or something to where you could actually uh, create a, a device that does this for you. There's not much of a market in it for it, so I doubt I'm going to create that device. But you could imagine doing that for uh, other ADFAC computers, or you could do it maybe for a Commodore computer, right? I, I'm, I haven't researched this yet, but I'm sure there's software out there for a Commodore computer that takes the audio and converts it to text. And so you could, again, save audio, uh, write a basic program. Uh, save it uh, and load it at the same time to your ZX81 or maybe as a, a Speccy uh, to to transfer that way. And of course, um, had I done this uh, maybe 15 years ago, this might be more useful. But most of these machines, I don't know about the TRS-80 pocket computer, but the ZX81, Time Synchro 1000, the QA, Commodore, they all have SD card interfaces now, so that you don't actually <laughs> have to have an issue with converting programs, but I think the program that I'm going to uh, create is, again, since it's going to listen on the audio port for incoming audio, you could also use it to uh, um, maybe create a, an automatic um, tape uh, loader so that if you have a program, uh, say you have a program on cassette, you could load it onto your favorite computer and then turn around and, and, <clears throat> and save it right to, the, to your Windows machine so where it automatically captures it and, and creates a WAV file out of it. You could do that as well. But what I want to do today is just my retro land version two. Uh, last time I did a proof of concept, so you can think of this time as, as my prototype. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's get to it. 
On my desktop, I have POC tools, which is the pocket computer uh, conversion tools. And this time, all I'm going to be using is this wave to bin, which is basically the executable that wave to bass uh, command, which is a batch script called to convert my audio file from the pocket computer to a basic file. <clears throat> I've actually already copied it into this folder. Uh, the other two files, uh, executables I'm going to use is uh, ZX text to uh, P, which is the ZX81 program that converts uh, basic to a, this internal P format, which is the internal uh, memory format of the ZX81. And then this time, instead of using the ZXC uh, program, these are the 16 bit ones that took forever to run, I have this uh, tape utils jar uh, file that actually um, uh, uh, does a much uh, better job of doing this in a much quicker job. So let me demo these uh, programs for you. I'm going to open up a command shell. And uh, in my command shell, uh, I, I'm going to CD into uh, desktop and then uh, CD into uh, TRS-80. So um, if I do a um, wave to bin help, you'll see uh, two, it's two, two, two dashes. You'll see it has a whole bunch of options. I can specify the source and destination file. And then uh, the type, I can create a, uh, a various types, but I want to, uh, the type's going to be basic. Uh, you give it the, the particular number of the pocket computer, which happens to be 1211. Um, and I think that's all I really need to give it on the, uh, with regard to um, my parameters um, for, for that. The, um, the tape utils one um, is, uh, if I, I can just run that just to show you how that looks. So if you just run uh, Java jar tape utils, it actually opens up an interface. And then from there, you can actually run this interactively. Um, however, you can, there is a, uh, there is a, there's a mode on here where you can run it um, in command mode, uh, command line mode. So if you type Java uh, class path tape utils a jar, and then there is a, a library in here, which does p file utils dash p uh, out dot p. Um, it'll actually give you a different set of uh, it give you a set of menus to where you can have um, the you can play the file uh, on on um, that you've converted. Uh, on your speaker, and you can read in a P file. So that's the P file that I read in. So this is going to allow me to convert a P file to uh, audio that the ZX81 can read. So those are the, um, the and, 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 and the entire, um, it's not going to find the P file, but the entire uh, syntax for this is that you would give it uh, the play command. And then Z, you can give it a name uh, uh, of, of the program, and then, and then this would, uh, if I had a, a proper P file, I would actually read it in. So, um, yeah, so what I need to do, first of all, let me get rid of this uh, init uh, uh, for the, um, but what I need to do is I need to create a, um, uh, a file. So I'm going to call it uh, save as, I'm going to save it into the same uh, directory. And I'm going to call it, um, uh, Let's call it transfer.py. Uh, and I think what it's going to do, actually, unfortunately, let me see. Oh, no, it did it right. OK. So transfer.py. So the first thing I need to do is import a few things. Um, I've already researched this. So I want to import the audio um, OP uh, library, which is going to allow me to uh, deal with um, checking out the level, uh, the audio level when I'm when, as I'm trying to um, uh, see if when I'm listening on the port, and then the PI audio is sort of the, the, the standard one that you want to use to um, um, uh, deal with audio. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Um, so import OS uh, and import sys are ones that I tend to add to it. Oh, and for the audio stuff, import uh, wave is the other one that I want. So these are kind of standard ones sometimes that I add to my scripts. Uh, for instance, the um, OS one allows you to run uh, commands from Python 
run OS commands in Python. And the sys1 lets you like exit, et cetera, that kind of stuff. But these are the, the, the imports that I'm going to need, I think, for the um, audio portion. OK, so um, I basically want uh, my, my, my block size, I guess, um, call it chunk, to be uh, a K. So this is the block size that I get for my um, for my um, um, audio, and I want the format to be uh, PY audio PA int sixteen. So this is basically saying uh, sixteen uh, bits per sample. Um, <clears throat> I want my channel. I, I want to do stereo channels. Um, I guess I could do mono, but I think stereo will work. And I want my um, uh, my frame uh, my frame uh, my rate. Uh, so uh, rate, I guess I can call it uh, equal to uh, four four one hundred, which is sort of the um, uh, the the, which is the sort of the sample rate, right? Uh, which is the sta standard sample rate. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to have um, my my sound level is going to be zero. So zero, and I can change that, but I think zero, if, since I'm doing line in zero, it'll be zero if there's nothing coming into the, the port. Uh, the file name that I'm going to generate um, is just going to be called out.wave. And so what I want to do is, um, uh, so to create uh, that audio port, uh, pi audio, pi. So this is the method in the pi audio class, um, and uh, then I want to open a stream in for, uh, for the uh, audio. Uh, so this is basically going to open my mic port uh, in the audio import, and so I can open it. Uh, I can say format equals. Format. I know that sounds weird, but that's actually the uh, uh, um, uh, maybe this number of channels would be plural here, right? So some of these are just going to look kind of weird. Channels equals channels. Um, well, there should be a comma after this, I think. Format equals format. Uh, rate equals, so the first thing is the attribute uh, that you're sending in, and the second one is your actual local variable. Um, input, but I think this should work, input equals true, oops, comma, and then um, we're going to say frame per buffer equals chunk, and that is basically the, uh, the arguments to open, so we're going to do uh, PY audio, uh, it's camel case, PA int 16, number of channels is going to be 2, rate is going to be 44,100, 44, uh, and then frame is going to be 1024. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so um, what I want to do is, so uh, maybe add a print statement here that I'm listening. And uh, so I'm just going to create a while loop. And in my while loop, uh, I'm going to uh, read into this uh, variable data uh, a chunk uh, from my stream. And so then, uh, and I found this online. So audio, so so this is how you can sort of compute the level. If you go to RMS stands for, I'll put it in the, um, the comments. Audio, oop, there's the other class data too. Uh, so this is supposed to be able to read the level. And what I'm going to do uh, just for now is I'm going to print what RMS is just to see where we are. And so let's leave the program as that. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, um, uh, connect the audio of my um, pocket computer and uh, uh, so I won't, you won't be able to hear me speak um, because I, I'm going to be using that mic for that. But let, let, and then I'm going to try to load in a program and see if the levels change, okay? But let's first of all see if this works. So if I say save, because right now it's using the, the, the mic 
uh, from um, from my computer. So it should actually work this way. So if I run Python uh, transfer.py, oh, it's uh, I believe it's uh, py audio. Yep, I screwed that up. So py audio uh, typo. Uh, I can close this a little bit. Uh, maybe put this side by side. So if I do this again, uh, okay, frame per buffer. Did I misspell it? Frame per frames per buffer. It's plural. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's little things like that that trip you up. But one more time. There we go. And if I talk, you can see that. When I talk more, you can see that this is actually uh, reflecting the audio. Uh, if I so, I'm going to be quiet, and you can see it gets single digits. And then when I speak, you can see that it gets larger. So this actually is is grabbing the um, the um, audio value. And if I quit this, um, <clears throat> yeah. So the values are over a thousand. Um, so if I wanted to, so so silence is sort of. in under 100 or, and let's see when I'm talking. When I'm talking, it's hello, hello, hello. And, but you do have to worry about pauses. So I guess that, so you can get sentence breaks, but it's hard to get pauses. But if hopefully what we'll have here is that the whole thing will be completely no noise at all when I plug in the line in as the mic, and it'll be zero, because I have set my level to zero. But so that should work. So let's actually do that. I'm going to plug in my line in to see how the computer handles it. And then uh, I'll, I'll do a, a C save to see if we can see anything on that. So let me do that. So what we saw here was that uh, as soon as I hit C save, the uh, it goes up to this uh, uh, larger value of um, 18 uh, or anything below uh, above zero, and then when it starts actually sending the information, it gets into the 20s or 30s. So I can definitely um, have this working by um, adding. Uh, um, a line here. So instead of printing this uh, out constantly, I can, for instance, do something like that, uh, where I have um, if RMS is greater than level, then I can break. And and for the uh, since I'm not doing uh, using my computer mic, which has a lot of noise in it, and this is either completely silent or not, I think that'll work. Um, and so then um, I can actually um, uh, type in here, uh, uh, yeah, print done. Let's see how this does. So I'm going to do the same test again. Uh, let me save it. Uh, and then I'm going to run it from here. But let me uh, plug in. the. So again, I keep having to plug in and lose my audio. So I want to be quiet. You might hear the little uh, high-pitched tone from the... Um, let me just type in C save so I can do this a bit, a bit quicker this time. Um, well, let me actually show you what you what you'll be hearing. So you kind of you kind of hear a faint version of this, uh, and then and so that's when it gets below, above zero, and then you'll hear the. Uh, so that once I plug this in, that's all you hear and very faintly. 
um, but I don't have dual mics at the moment. Probably a flaw in my recording means, but uh, we'll get through this. So, uh, so I'm going to put this up here, and I'm going to plug in the audio again. So here we go. And that is, and that is proof of concept that we can actually listen uh, for a level, and then uh, we can get into record mode. So yeah, we're, we're getting really uh, uh, good at uh, uh, doing that. So let's let's move on. Um, so what I want to do next is I need to create um, an array of frames, which I'll initialize. So uh, array to store uh, frames. And then we're basically just going to repeat this loop up here. Um, but this time, instead of listening, we're going to be doing recording. And uh, um, most of this is going to be the same. The one difference is here, if it's less than or equal to level. So once I hit silence again, when I'm done with the load, I want to break. Uh, otherwise, uh, I want to um, uh, append my data to my frames. So I'm, I'm creating an internal structure that will do that. So that's my new loop. Um, and then when I'm done with that, uh, so again, uh, uh, I want to stop everything. Um, so when I'm out of the loop, I want to basically uh, stop the stream. Oops, there's no semicolon. I'm used to type, uh, programming in C or C++ or Java. Uh, I want to close uh, the stream. And then I want to actually terminate the, um, uh, the audio class that I had used to open the stream with. Uh, and then I guess we can print a finished message if we want. Um, and so this uh, will create a wave file called wave.out. Oops, I keep doing that. Um, uh, but let's actually move, uh, um, and, well, so that actually does not. So now we need to actually create the wave file. So, um, and again, I looked this up already, so I'm not doing this from, uh, from memory. So we want to save the recording to a wave file. And the way you do that, is um, you just have some room here. Um, I'm going to uh, create this variable called wave file, which is, uh, and I'm going to open a wave file using the wave class. Uh, and this means write in binary, wv. Um, and then I'm going to set channels to uh, two, which is my variable. I'm going to set sample sam, sample with set samp with. Uh, it, it always bothers me as someone who codes a lot and actually teaches coding that I see uh, I see camel case. So these are all Python classes. I see underbar. I see <laughs> nothing, and I also see camel case. Like in uh, in my uh, early on, there was in this class uh, in this uh, not class, but uh, all right here. Uh, so this is uh, and, and and even not cap not capitalizing the p and pi camel case for methods tends to be uh, lowercase. And uh, actually, this is actually not a method. This is a class because open is a method on the p audio class, and this must be a collection of them. Um, or the, this is the import interface. This is the so this is fine capitalizing the p and the a in camel case and having the. Um, methods on that class be lowercase. But then you see uh, the mix of underbars. And then in this case, uh, forget it. We're not even going to do that. <laughs> so it's a little pet peeve of mine of bad, of bad program styles. Just shows that lots of people have worked on this. And everyone has their favorites. But I like to always go with the general uh, standard um, uh, of, um, of the project. Or you know, if you're uh, um, being paid by someone, then 
of the um, person who's paying you. So uh, sample format, uh, actually, uh, uh, no, I think I called it format. Uh, form, uh, yeah, this is this the format, all right? So um, the sample size is 44,100. Uh, so uh, just make sure my variables, so I have channels, I have format. I just want to make sure they all kind of uh, still work with that. Yep. So file name is what I called, uh, I think I called it out.wave. Yep. So I've got that up here. Uh, so set channels is two, uh, and then um, we're getting um, get sample size uh, format. Okay. Um, oops, and I should probably put a period in here since this is uh, accessing uh, uh, methods of your know, wave file. Um, and then set frame rate, and I think I called mine rate. Yep. Um, and it's typos that get you in these things, right? And WF uh, right frames. Uh, and here, um, again, this one, I'm not quite sure what they're doing here. B join frames. Um, so that's a little foreign to me. Um, I haven't studied Python well enough. <clears throat> To understand what B um, double quotes dot joint frames is about, <clears throat> but uh, I'll put it in the comment section just in case you're interested. Um, I'm, I'm not as a proficient in Python because I haven't used it enough yet. And then uh, we're going to close the, uh, the the frame. All right. So we have set channels, set sample width, set frame rate, and write frames. I think those in my notes are the methods that I, I kind of wrote it, uh, handwritten wrote it on a sheet of paper. So I might have um, some typos there, but I think this uh, it doesn't seem to be, a, I think it's two single quotes. Yeah. I actually made a point of saying that. <clears throat> I should have researched what that was. Okay. Uh, so this part is foreign to me because I haven't dealt with wave files on Python before. Um, okay. But this one I actually uh, um, did not look up. This is. Uh, uh, and I've done this a lot in Python. Uh, so we want to convert to basic, then ZX81 uh, P, and finally play audio. So we're going to do a bunch of OS commands. So this is a, a how you can, in Python, uh, call uh, any uh, DOS shell command you want. So here you just stick in here the command you want. And again, I already showed you this wave to bin exe can now take, uh, and the type is going to be bass. Uh, so again, if you remember um, here, uh, I did wave to bin dash help. Oh, uh, did I misspell it? Oh, it's wave to bin exe help. And you can see these are the, the type and the pocket computer uh, name. So T is bass. Dash P is uh, so the sharp one twelve eleven the same as the pocket computer one, and the input file is out wave and the output file is out bass. So that will then hopefully if I didn't make any typos and I did of course it's wav not wave to bin, <coughs> and then um, from here I will. Uh, <coughs> uh, the next one is I want to use the ZX Text2P, which I'm very familiar with because I've used it a lot with my ZX simulator. And the output file is a P file, and the input file is a base file. So that one's easier. And then the other one is going to be kind of a bear. So this is the one that's actually literally going to play it um, <clears throat> on the speaker. And this is the, uh, again, Java, the tape. Um, utils.jar file, and here, uh, class path, I give it the um, overall jar file, tape utils.jar, and then I give it the path, tape utils.zx81.p file utils camel case, <clears throat> in case it does matter, dash p 
the out file. I want to play that and I want to give a name. And they do point out here that you should use uh, only uppercase letters, letters that are legal in, on the ZX81. So, so this tape utils won't even uppercase, lowercase letters for you. So Java, class path, tape utils. I suppose I can make this slightly bigger. I have the screen width. Uh, I don't know if I can make it big enough to where it'll actually, well, I can, but then this will cover this up. Oops. Um, <clears throat> so uh, sometimes extending the screen really helps you look for any bugs and whatnot. Let's make sure this, yeah. So I gave myself extra, so I need rid of these. And that should actually do it, right? So I have, um, this is all the new stuff. Frames, uh, print recording, while true, I copy this, less than level, or equals to zero. Append data, so I want to stream, stop stream. Um, close and terminate. <clears throat> no spellings there. Finished. Uh, so I have wave open file name, uh, write binary. Set channels, that is plural in my notes. Set samp width. It's just like that, you know. Again, camel case would make it easy to read. And you do do a, a get sample size uh, format. Uh, set frame rate is a rate. And write frames, plural. Uh, and then this weird thing that I don't think I have a typo in my notes, or I don't think it's a typo uh, from what my notes say, I should say. And then again, these system calls I think are fine. Wave to bin, it was indeed WAV. To bend uh, out, you know, I just got to make sure you uh, balance these. And they're balanced here and here. Oops. Here and here. And uh, ZX text to P doesn't really care very much about case sensitivity because it's DOS or Windows DOS, command shell. O output. And then, again, the only case file utils and it's plural. Tape utils is not. <laughs> uh, yeah, throw the inconsistency there as well. I would have capitalized the U in tape utils. Uh, tape utils jar, tape utils. Yeah, I think this will work. Let's make it, let's make it work, all right? So this time um, I'm going to um, save it. Uh, and I'm actually going to, uh, the problem with this is it doesn't, so if you have a bug later on, it'll actually run until you get there. And uh, so instead of staying in here and writing, uh, writing it, I'm going to um, uh, quit and go back to the camera. And if I have to make any corrections, I'll, I'll point them out. I, I don't think there are any, if I have any typos. I think I'm good to go, but um, uh, I mean, I can run it, but it's just gonna sit there and uh, basically, oh, right, because I'm, uh, and it's never going to stop recording because uh, <clears throat> um, because I'm on the mic level now, and so um, it's more than it's more than twenty. I suppose I could test it out by doing it this. If I set the mic level to a hundred um, temporarily, what it should do is so I'm quiet. It should listen on, and as soon as I speak, it should, and then. I'm, I'm quiet again, it should stop. So I guess I can test it that way. So let's give it a try. So I'm gonna be quiet and, and start this up and then I'll say something and see if it stops. Here we go. Um, the problem is um, the, the mic gives you a little bit of noise at the same time. So let's actually make this 500 <clears throat> or a thousand. I can shout. <laughs> so this will cause the level not to uh, go down. Um, did it try to, uh, it did try to write an out file. Um, so let's uh, delete that. All right, let's do it one more time. Testing. Yeah. And uh, the, the program that it actually crashed on was, uh, uh, Oh, I actually didn't like channels, but it did write the out file. So let's see if I have a bug in that. So it seems like uh, set channels, channels. Um, let's see if that's a bug or not. WF set. Oh, yeah. So it's good that I ran it. There's actually an end here. Set number of channels. Okay. So let's 
debug this one more time, and I'm going to get rid of the WAV file. Um, delete. And so one more time, I'm going to be quiet here, and then I'll say something. Here we go. Saying something. Yeah, and so the, uh, the P file did not exist because uh, the, um, the wave to bin could not find, um, you can see here, the wave to bin tried to convert what I, my audio that I said. But it couldn't because uh, there, it, there, wasn't a, there was no synchronization information found. And so it was just garbage wave files. And everything else kind of crashes after that. But we did then try to, uh, um, I think P file out P does not exist. So that was probably an error message from um, um, the, and we can actually put messages in here, for, I suppose. That might be smart. Print. Um, uh, converting wave, converting WAV to basic, and then the next step would be print convert converter converting. Sorry, converting. Um, basic to P, and so we can see where it uh, hangs up, but, uh, and then print, uh, converting uh, P to wave and playing. All right, so that should do it. So if we do that again and save it, and again, I gotta be quiet when I start this up. So here we go. Now speaking, yeah, and you can see that it was uh, converting wave to basic. This kind of crashed, no synchronization on. And then basic to P, it says cannot open input file. And then converting P to wave, it says file out P does not exist. So you can kind of see where um, the various uh, programs themselves kind of found the issue with them. Okay, so, and, and if we wanted to look at what was being played, you can play the audio file. Make sure that I have the audio is actually on. It is. Uh, so if I play this, now, 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 yeah. So I, it, it's on repeat. So I guess I should. Now, 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 now. If I want to repeat, then it'll just go. Now, yeah. So it so it, it recorded properly. So again, this is a a, a little program. So um, it's just two pages long, uh, and I'll do this slowly here. So uh, all the way up to um, print while loop recording frames of pen, and then if I so here's where I'm ending this, and if I just, so you can take a screenshot, and then if I paste up, this is the rest of the program, right? Take a screenshot. And uh, you can play yourself with uh, using uh, this sort of capture ability and, and do this with your own 8-bit um, retro equipment. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, take this program, and I'm actually going to run it by plugging it in. So I'm gonna quit this video and uh, move back to, the, uh, to my camera. Back at my camera, um, well, what I've done is, if you notice that I have, uh, I've enlarged the font size so you can actually see what's going on. So what I want to do <clears throat> is a couple of things. First, I, I need to uh, arrange the camera so you can kind of see both, uh, the screen and the, um, uh, both screens. Uh, and then also I'm going to have to move the pocket computer. Another thing I want to do is, uh, the uh, um, uh, I actually need to change this program slightly. Yeah, let's see if I can put it in. Yeah. So uh, this should be set back to zero. Um, by the way, sometimes you do get a little bit of noise on the channel, and it, it might click up. So you could do something like five would just be as safe as zero. Um, certainly, when this thing makes a noise, it's above ten. Uh, so if you do want to do like five or maybe two, it might be safer. So I'm going to put it at two just to be safe. It should be zero, but I've, I've experienced at times if I'll have to reboot my um, my pocket computer. Let me move that somewhere reasonable. I'll have to reboot. I'll have to reboot or, or <laughs> reboot. Turn this power on and off, and it'll go back to zero. So I'm going to put the level at two just to be safe. And the other part is uh, I'm actually not doing. Um, 
uh, I guess I went off screen here. Uh, instead of having this be hello, I, I'm going to just name this to out. Uh, I'm going to ignore the file name anyway, but just to be a bit more complete. So those are the two changes I've made to uh, to this little program. Uh, level of two, just to be a little bit above one and uh, out. So uh, the um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to close this now. Uh, and again, you'll just play around with the level. And by the way, the, the other thing to note on that is um, uh, the, um, okay, putting this back in the frame here. The, um, this uh, Pi Audio library actually doesn't come, uh, come with the, the default um, uh, installation, uh, but you can actually get it and it's pretty easy to get. If you use the pip command to install it, it'll ask for the uh, Visual C++ compiler, but you can actually get a pre-compiled version. I'll put a link in where I found mine. Uh, I think the Wave comes with it. I think Audio uh, Audio OP already comes with the default, so does System OS, but Wave and Pi Audio, you have to add, add that import. Okay, so I'm going to close this just to sort of clean this up a little bit. Uh, let's move this to the top so we can see when... Um, and then we're going to move uh, this also to the top. Uh, what we want to do, of course, is we want to disable the audio here so that it comes through our speakers. And then uh, I'm going to turn this on. So Python transfer is on. Um, hopefully you can see that. And what my hope is that when I, um, and so this is to the mic, ear, this will be listening into the conversion. I'm going to turn this on, see, save this, and it should all work automatically. So let's do that. So I'm going to, um, so let's see if we can do see, save here. So you can actually see it. This part's always tricky. So uh, there we go. So I'm going to type in see, save. And again, the, the name doesn't matter, but I'm just going to call it hex. Hit return. Uh, I'm gonna. I should type enter. So you see that's listening right now. Oh uh, yeah. So this this is listening right now. I'm gonna type enter. Uh, same time type load. Oops. Oh, it's so hard to type with one hand. Double quote. So that's on, type she save. That's recording. It's all automated. It's a pretty long program, but here's hoping that this will actually work. <laughs> but other than uh, starting this program up, I just type C save and C load at the same time, and it should actually. Uh, And it stopped. It's doing its thing, and now it's loading. Look at that. Yeah, so the screen does go away um, when you uh, finish, but uh, uh, the automated uh, mechanism did do its job. <clears throat> this is going to take a little longer to load, but that's okay. And uh, then we should just simply be able to type run on that computer. Um, and uh, let's see if that works. Stretching my arm to stay out of camera view. It's, it's loaded, so if I hit enter, that's the program. And if I type run and type, uh, what did I do? Four, five, six, uh, yeah, four, five, six, seven, enter, digit one, uh, it's digit seven, D11, one, one, I think is what it was. And yay, there it is. All right. So, um, yeah, that is uh, that was my plan for today. Um, as I said, if I wanted to do this um, realistically, I, I might do uh, use a Raspberry Pi. And this is an old one, but you can get uh, the ones that are half the size that do um, uh, that are even cheaper. Now this only has audio out, so I don't know how you would do. Um, uh, 
I don't know how you would do mic in with that, but um, uh, still, uh, so these are all doable. But again, it's it's not really a, a project that I want to um, do at this point. Uh, I just think there's a big audience in, for it. But I just wanted to prototype that it can be done. So that was uh, that was pretty interesting, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's all I got. I think um, my next videos are going to focus on the QR a little bit. Um, I was going to do my my Wi-Fi SD card. Um, uh but right now the sd card that i got actually broke and i don't think there's anything to do with uh manufacturing i just had it in the car and we had a hot day and i think it had it sitting on the dashboard of all things and the sun hit it so i ordered a new one so probably end of october early november i'll be going back to doing the wi-fi sd uh, and and uh, by the way um a group of us youtubers are going to get together and have a, a ql vember series similar to Septandi. So check that out and, and I'll be doing the uh, Wi-Fi thing as part of that. Uh, what I'll do next uh, series of videos is I, I have this uh, Tim Hartnell uh, uh, book. He's a famous author on basic programs in the 80s and this is exploring AI on the QL. That's sort of my area of expertise since that's what I do my research in. Uh, mostly speech recognition but uh, I'll do some AI on the QL and let's, let's see if it's kind of fun. All right, so uh, thanks for joining me today uh, and uh, stay safe.